the home care industry traditionally was thought of more as just home health care and hospice services. But the home care industry has really grown and the definition of it is services being provided in the community and in patients' homes. So it includes not only those two, home health and hospice, but also private duty nursing services, personal care services, which is actually federal programs and state programs paying family members to provide services. It's durable medical equipment being delivered to the home. It's pharmacy services that are being provided. It's also house call services where physicians are coming to the home, which also then translates that telemedicine and telehealth is now a form of home care service. Given some recent uh, increases in expenditures in home care and hospice, it's sort of unsurprising that these two industries uh, have been the focus of a lot of government scrutiny. Uh, recent MedPAC reports suggest that um, you know, hospice um, as a benefit in terms of expenditures has grown as much as 400 percent um, over the last couple decades. Uh, home care, um, home care agencies, uh, you know, based on some CMS recent reports, uh, CMS believes that uh, home health agencies have been paid in excess of $10 billion in improper payments. So the government is doing what it normally does, which is follow the money. HHS OIG the FBI and the Department of Justice have devoted considerable resources within the area of home health care within the last few years. For example, between fiscal year 2011 and 2015, they brought over 350 actions, both criminal and civil, against individuals within the home health care realm. Examples of kind of the actions and the areas in which they've been focusing on include services not medically necessary for beneficiaries, services not rendered where services were not provided to beneficiaries whatsoever, and the classic kickback cases. These investigations have been resolved both uh, civilly and criminally. On the civil side, uh, the majority of the cases have been brought under the False Claims Act. Um, damages and settlements have ranged from the low millions to amounts that exceed $100 million. Uh, many of these cases, um, you know, unfortunately for the companies, have ongoing corporate integrity agreement obligations, uh, which can be quite onerous. But it doesn't just end in terms of fine and money penalties. There's actually a number of people who have been prosecuted criminally and are sitting in jail right now for engaging in, you know, health care fraud. Many of these situations, the defendants have actually taken the course of going to trial and have had verdicts against them where they're in jail for five, 10 plus years for engaging in significant healthcare fraud. Before a client is subject to government action, whether it's through a civil investigative demand or a HIPAA subpoena or a grand jury subpoena, they need to have a firm plan in place over what to do when that day comes. They need to know how they're gonna to respond to search warrants being executed on their premises, whether it's at corporate headquarters or an offsite location, they need to know what to do when there is a False Claims Act filed against them and they receive a civil investigative demand from the Department of Justice. And they need to know what to do with their electronic evidence and have procedures in place that will preserve and retain electronic evidence. If you're a provider supplier um, uh, to any kind of service under uh, the federal health care programs, uh, in this day and age, it's not a necessarily an if, but a when. Under a long enough timeline, uh, nearly everyone is going to face scrutiny under the fraud and abuse laws. Critical to uh, the success of avoiding um, one, of these, uh, one of these investigations is active compliance. And not just compliance, but functional, active, successful compliance. You know, is your compliance program identifying problems? Is it solving the problems? And is it documenting that it's solving the problems? The government has made it very clear that they're not just looking at going after organizations in its totality or low-level employees. They're looking to go after senior officials within an organization, senior managers, and even potentially the board of directors. So organizations need to really understand that no matter what role you play, that your culpability is in question and everyone within the organization needs to be asking questions. Are we be doing things right? Are we monitoring the right issues? Are we returning money when and if it's necessary? So everyone needs to take a responsibility at a low level, at a mid-level, high level, and even to the point of governance. <laughs>